that uh, try something different Hi folks, welcome to Dig Drive DIY. My name is Neil, and today I wanted to share and provide you a closer look at one of my best DIY projects, my homemade backhoe mounted wood splitter. Like the example you saw in the beginning, I would get into situations to help cut down trees or help clean up storm damage in exchange for keeping all the firewood. And when the trees are over 24 inches in diameter, it starts to be quite a challenge to figure out how to deal with those big rounds. They're just hard to handle. I wanted a way to work with big rounds that was safe and didn't break your back. So about seven or eight years ago, I had this idea in the back of my mind. I always thought there should be a way that I could use my John Deere 310 backhoe to split wood. I call this my great idea that someone else thought of first because I had never actually seen anything like what I wanted to build. You know, does anyone else ever think they have a great idea for an invention only to Google it and find out it's existed for years? <laughs> It's a good way to be disappointed, but I knew of skidster mounted splitters and a couple mini X splitters that used the auxiliary hydraulics, but I needed to build something that could just utilize the bucket curl cylinder that I already have. I did eventually find the patent drawings for almost exactly what I had pictured in my head and ultimately what I would create myself. So I wasn't gonna get rich off a new splitter invention, but I did still want a backhoe mounted splitter. And since I'm a DIY guy rather than a buy it guy, I decided I'd try to build one. And I started with my own drawings and measurements and tried to figure out what the geometry would need to be based on my best estimates. And so I set out then to mock up the design with some scrap lumber and a piece of four inch PVC pipe to use as the pusher bar. And this was the only way I knew to get all the angles and range of motion correct before starting to cut and weld what would need to be some pretty heavy gauge steel. So we got a working plywood model ready. And then I enlisted the help of my cousin Larry because he is an excellent welder and fabricator. And he also had access to an engineer and a burn table where he could take my pencil drawings and turn them into weld ready parts. So Larry helped me to weld up the splitter components and get it mounted to the stick of my backhoe. And it turned out absolutely great. I've done a few modifications to it, but it has worked really well for me so far. So now I'd like to show you how it works. Let's head back over there to the pesky rounds that I couldn't split by hand and see if we can make short work of them with this thing. I need to get the backhoe set up. And we'll just load these trunks right into the trailer as soon as I get turned around. I think I can reach them all from there. All right, I'll show you how this works. You just squeeze it. Just like that. And you try not to let the pieces fly all over the place. And then I start having them down. I'll hold them up over the trailer. Split it in half, and then I just keep having it. 
and I try to move the stick of the backhoe forward through the log like that so that the logs don't move around a lot. And I'm just going to keep having it down like that. And I want to have these again before I put them in the trailer. Now I drive this with the wedge. And what I mean by that is I just concentrate on where my wedge is. And that's how I determine where to go with the backhoe. I'll pick my spot that I want to land the wedge. And that's how I'm running. I'm not watching the back at all, really. So that's a kind of a small piece there. So uh, I can get out and pick them up. Or I can try to spin them around like this. And see if I can get them all in one bunch. Kind of like that. Extend the max. Extend the hoe. There we go. So I added those spikes on the back of the wedge because when I had to reach out and grab stuff like this, I didn't have a way to bring it back to me. So the spikes, I can, I can reach across the back side of that log and I can flip it up like that and get it to come to me. And that's at the perfect angle. So I'm just going to split that guy right there. Full of ants. Let's see if I can reach way back here and get this guy. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to reach it. I guess I'll use my hands. Oh, that's so terrible. This one's pretty wide. So the maximum width I can split is about 24 inches. This one shouldn't be a problem, but it's getting close. It looks like it's a little less than 24. Oh, by the way, this is the log that was in my firewood processor video. It was covered in mud and everybody saw me move it with my 755 and this is why everyone thought that we were running muddy logs through the processor because of this one right here this one never made it through the processor it was too big and we were just moving out of the way and i showed it on camera and that's why everybody assumed i was mudding up the chains and why they were going dull but, all right i'm gonna I started the timer now to see how long it takes me to split one big round like that because obviously this isn't the fastest way to cut wood split wood but it's not too bad so i'm gonna see how long it takes me i'll go all the way down to what i feel is a comfortable size for the stove oh this is a big one too so i gotta reach all the way open to get it All right, that should be my time. Time should be right there, whatever that is. And I'm gonna stop it. It's 3.14. All right, so let's just say three minutes to bust up that big round. So I don't know what it would take on a regular wood splitter. That's not actually too bad, three minutes for that big piece. And my back does not hurt at all. Now here's some oak. rabbit this stuff is really popping now if you can see see I'm trying to get that one right in front of the camera right there get him fluffed up there we go. He's doomed now. One thing I did want to mention is that this takes a good bit of practice to do. I mean, uh, you know, I don't know how to say it. I don't want to come off the wrong way, but this makes digging dirt feel like a piece of cake because this takes a considerable amount of patience. I'm certainly not the best operator out there, so if, if I can do it, most folks that run equipment can probably do it, but just know that, uh, just know it does take some getting used to. You know, this would be really awesome on a mini excavator.
Oh, my pin's coming out. See that? My pin came out. Dang it. Well, that happens from time to time. It sheared it off. I was going to mention that that's one of the things I would probably change about this. I tried to mimic the John Deere style of pin retention with that bolt. And what happens is this gets to moving around in there and it shears the bolt off. So it really needs to have a stud sticking out of there that will hold this in place and not rely on the bolt. Design flaw, my fault. Let's see how these work. Maybe they work on smaller ones. Uh oh. Gotta get used to them apparently. There we go. Uh huh. This is a big one. Oh boy. Well, I didn't have to bend over. All right. How about two at a time? Yeah. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for me. I don't have another bolt to put in the backhoe to retain that pin in there, so I'm gonna call this quits. It's getting later in the afternoon, so. Hey, first time I've been using these, and I wanna give a shout out to one of my subscribers and viewers and commenters, Big Rodders from Ireland. He sent me a link to look at these, and I thought, what the heck? You know, I've had a lot of people tell me I need to quit bending over all the time and either use a picaroon or something like this, so I said, what the heck, I'll give it a try. So thanks a lot, Big Rodders, I appreciate it. And speaking of subscribers and viewers, I wanna take a chance to thank all of you. I, I don't stop often enough and say thank you. I try to avoid that stuff in the videos, but if you've watched this long, then I feel safe doing it at the end of the video because you're the dedicated viewer. So just know that I appreciate it so much. Making the videos is a hobby. I just really enjoy it, I enjoy the process. So having that feedback, interaction, those likes and comments, that really helps me to justify it. So. Thank you so much for that. I want to thank you for watching. Hopefully you found something here useful, and if not, at least entertaining. I'll see you next week. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.